guy. Remember, it took him 18 months to get the first kind of results, then 25 months to get the next. I found these steps over two posters he made, one of them. What is up guys and welcome back. So as you might as well have guessed already, we are gonna take a look at a hair transformation today from a guy named Manly Coffee. I found a trustless at the sub form on Reddit. So I won't get into any details now or anything like that. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read up and explain what he did and I'm gonna comment probably on if it's any kind of myth that we know about, or if it seems like it's kind of legit or if it just seems completely bonkers. So I have this post here on my phone and if you want to check it out for yourself it is linked down below in the description and you can just follow there otherwise I'll post it up here and you can just follow along that way. Also if you want to check out some of the products that he mentions in his protocol and that he is using I found all the products and I've linked them down below in the description where you can buy them from Amazon. So basically what the guy did was that when he was 28 years old he started doing the 5 milligrams of finasteride daily. He did cut them up into quarters and take them that way. Then only two months later he bought something called More F, which is apparently a minoxidil slash finasteride combination in a topical solution. Personally I never heard about that myself but it seems like a very good idea compared to some of you guys I have read that chops up your finasteride and for some reason mix them up in minoxidil and try and apply it this way. At the very least this is a product that was made for this topical solution in the first way and I think it's way better than making your own with pills that weren't supposed to go on the scalp in the first way. So at the very least I'm not a big proponent of using finasteride on your scalp because I don't think there's enough studies on it. Also if you are taking it orally it seems kind of counterintuitive to use it systemically and topically because the thing you already eaten is in your scalp at this point. But whatever, if he thinks this works out for him is a good solution and why not add something more if you really want to go all out on your hair restoration. He then mentions that after he started using this more if and the finasteride that he had a lot of shedding going on and of course this is 100% to be expected especially when you're using minoxidil. Since minoxidil has a tendency to wash your hair follicles through the catagen phase over to the anagen phase once again. This means that your follicle has to expel the current hair shaft that it had been working on and start all over new. So that is why you are experiencing a lot of hair shedding when you are using a compound like this more F or anything like minoxidil in it. Now he does explain that he didn't like that outcome. So what he did was that he changed out the finasteride with dutasteride instead. Dutasteride and finasteride is more or less the same compound. The only difference is that finasteride only targets the alpha 5 reductase type 2 enzymes while dutasteride targets both the type 1 and 2 enzymes but at the end of the day it doesn't really make that much of a difference if you look at the clinical data. He did have some crazy hair transformation in only 25 months so what am I to say about that. He then explains that later down the road six months after he changed over to dutasteride he decided to add Nesol into his combo of hair transformation products and he did decide to go with four times weekly of doing the Nisrol shampooing routine or whatever you'll call it. Personally that's a little bit over the edge for me but let's say he actually had some kind of dandruff going on from the minoxidil and whatever he was putting on his scalp. As I've mentioned before on my channel there's actually a lot of evidence that suggests that if you have dandruff or sebum or dermatitis in your scalp it can actually aggravate your hair loss even further so who knows where he were at that point so it might have been a good idea. He decided to drop it down to three times weekly. I can already tell you that he even further down the road decided to drop it down to two times weekly which I think is preferable to just keeping the dandruff and the dermatitis away and keeping sebum out of your scalp and whatever nasty stuff you might have growing in your scalp at that point. Then once again, three months after that, he decided to add microneedling to his regimen. And he decided to start out with 1.5 millimeters, 
doing it once weekly, which is more or less the perfect routine if you ask me. He just kept on doing that straight out for nine months and I actually think he just continued to use it. He did mention some shedding initially when he started. That could be shedding or actually just him cutting some of his hairs while learning to use the machine more or less proper. And then once again, six months later, again, he decided to add some more stuff to the routine. He added IO58841, which is one of my personal favorites. And then he decided to add something called T-Gel. Now I had to look up T-Gel because I didn't actually know what T-Gel was. But T-Gel apparently is a shampoo for your hair that first off they claim to combat dandruff and dermatitis and stuff like that, which I definitely believe in. The only problem I actually have with this product is that they claim to combat psoriasis. And the only problem here is if you know about autoimmune dysfunctions, psoriasis isn't something that you combat by changing your shampoo. Psoriasis is an autoimmune function that makes your own body target your skin cells and expel them from your body, making you create fast and newer skin cells and making all this um, reddish, scourish thing with too much skin production. And a shampoo definitely won't do anything for that. It might help relieve some of the symptoms, but it cannot combat this. And when I see a product claiming to do something that is inherently impossible by all means, immediately I have complete distrust in the product and the company as a whole. If you have seen my review on the Marcy London that claims to do some more or less the same stuff, well, instantly when I find stuff like this and I read up on it, I lose all trust in the product and I won't recommend it which is also why I don't link to it down below. But I have found something different that has the same properties. Because when you are trying to combat hair loss, it is good to have something that doesn't contain alcohol and power bands and something like that. The product he mentions does have these functions, but I'm gonna recommend something entirely different that doesn't claim to do some magic tricks they don't do because we can't even trust the ingredient list if we can't trust the label. So there you have it guys, that is more or less the whole thing he decided to do. I'm gonna just pull him up fast over here so you can see all the steps he took. And to be honest guys, my overall review on it is like he did 500 micrograms of dutasteride, 5% Kirkland minoxidil twice daily, weekly natural shampoo at 2% ketoconazole, one weekly routine of the microneedling with a Dr. Pen A1 set to 1.5 millimeters, IU58841 at 5% once daily, and then his um, shampoo that I'm not going to recommend at any point. But to be honest, guys, like this guy seems like he had it all planned out from the start. It doesn't seem like he were using the microneedle wrong or did apply way too much IO58841 or something like that. And the nice routine routine seems very decent itself. So I thought it was a very interesting part to show you guys that this is how long it actually takes to get these kind of results, but they are definitely achievable to the common man out there or whatever you'll call it. Like if you are in despair after 10 months and don't think that it is working out, try and stick with it for some time. If your routine seems more or less the same as this guy, remember it took him 18 months to get the first kind of results, then 25 months to get the next. I found these steps over two posters he made. One of them were a 25 month progress update and the other one were 18 months progress update. I've linked for both down below if you want to check them out. So guys, I hope this has been of interest to you, at least a word to me, especially seeing this kind of amazing results in only 25 months. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, remember to like the video, subscribe, whatever you feel like, and I'll see you next time. I'll see you. Cheers.